Today, freshwater lakes and rivers harbor some of the strangest predators known to our planet. Catfishes, gars, arapaima, tigerfish, and stingrays are some of the deadliest and primarily unseen threats to fishermen and swimmers in fresh water, more often than not obscured by sediment and mud. Unsurprisingly, some of the world's first rivers and lakes were home to monster predators too, but not the kind you might expect. Long before the dinosaurs first appeared on our planet, the most fearsome predators of our waters were invertebrates. While they would eventually be outcompeted by vertebrates such as fish and reptiles, some of them grew to truly monstrous proportions. And some of the first to do so were the Eurypterids, huge sea scorpions that patrolled the oceans and rivers of the Paleozoic. Today, we will be taking a look at Yekalopterus, the very largest of the Eurypterids, and quite possibly the largest arthropod ever to live on our planet. This is a journey that will take us back over 400 million years to a world very different to the one we know today. Sit back and relax as we take you on a tour through time to meet the giant sea scorpion of the Paleozoic. Yekalopterus renanii is a massive predatory eurypterid known from the early Devonian period of Germany around 410 million years ago. Growing from roughly two and a half to three meters long, this gargantuan arthropod was the biggest of its kind and was perfectly equipped for hunting in the fresh and brackish waters of ancient Europe. Much of the species' length was comprised of its body segmented into 11 bands of carapace before forming a broad, paddle-like tail. At its front end was the head, adorned with two complex compound eyes. Eight legs, situated underneath the animal's body, allowed it to rest comfortably on the sediment of the rivers and lakes it lived in, while two adapted, backwards-facing paddles acted as oars to push the animal through the water. The most impressive part of Yekalopterus, however, were the claws. Two jagged pincers at the end of stalk-like arms jutted out from the front of the animal's head and were used for handling, grasping, and ultimately dispatching prey items. Given the fact that this animal was the size of an average saltwater crocodile, it would have been a massively impressive sight in the waters of ancient Germany. The Eurypterids were a hugely successful group of aquatic carnivores throughout the early Paleozoic era. Known colloquially as sea scorpions, these arthropods were not arachnids, but another branch of chalicerates, distantly related to spiders and scorpions. Other modern chalicerates include the horseshoe crab and sea spiders, more creatures that can trace their lineage back to the time of Yekalopterus and beyond. They first evolved in either the early Ore Division or late Cambrian periods, where they soon became efficient predators, grasping invertebrates and eventually fish with their specially adapted pincers. Some species of Eurypterid were capable of crawling out of the early primordial seas and spending extended periods of time on land, beating our ancestors to the shorelines by almost 100 million years. Not only were Eurypterids successful, they were also diverse. While Yekalopterus was by far the biggest of the group, some species reached similar lengths. Pterygotus and Acutoramus almost rivaled it in size, while some genera, such as Alcanopterus, grew to just 2 centimeters in length. This huge range of forms and sizes allowed the Eurypterids to fill many ecological niches. Hibertopterus, for example, was an inhabitant of the Carboniferous swamp forests, filtering through the mud for invertebrates to feed on. It looked a lot like a giant horseshoe crab and reached sizes upwards of a meter and a half in length. Others, such as Megalograptus from the Ore Division, 
lived in sandy coastal waters and snatched up small prey items with their huge spined arms. The Eurypterids eventually became extinct at the end of the Permian period, around 251 million years ago. The Great Dying, the single worst extinction event in Earth's history, is what took them out, as the world slowly descended into a volcanic minefield. By the time they became extinct, many species of Eurypterids were small their ecological niches taken over by sharks and other species of ancient fish. The days of the giant, predatory arthropods was over. When Yekalopterus's fossils were first unearthed from the strata of the Rhineland in Germany, they were thought to belong to the aforementioned Pterygotus, one of the next largest Eurypterid genera. This was in 1914 when German paleontologist Otto Jekyll attempted to describe the find. Huge imprints of aquatic arthropods embedded in slabs of rock that Jekyll interpreted as being a meter and a half in length. When more fossil content was uncovered by Walter R. Gross in 1936, Leif Stromer, a paleontologist from Norway, was able to provide a more accurate description of the arthropod. Still, however, there was no evidence to suggest that this was a new genus, and not another species of Pterygotus. It wasn't until 1964 that the genus Yekalopterus was officially designated for these fossils by Charles D. Waterston. His studies suggested that the Eurypterid was different enough to other specimens of Pterygotus to be considered distinct a decision that was reached after looking at the way the arms and paddles of Yekalopterus were segmented. The genus name honors Otto Jekyll, the first paleontologist to attempt to describe the fossils, combined with the Greek word for wing, a suffix that is often used in Eurypterid names on account of the wing-like paddles used to push these animals through the water. Ten years later, the family Yekalopteridae was introduced to assign this genus to. Not all scientists agree with the placement of Yekalopteris in this new family, choosing instead to keep the animal within the family Pterygotidae, and the current standing is that Yekalopteridae should not be used. Another species of Yekalopteris was actually assigned in 2007 and it too was formally believed to be a species of Pterygotus. Yekalopterus howali, whilst much smaller than its giant German cousin, was a resident of freshwater lakes and rivers in the Devonian period of Wyoming. Yekalopterus was more than likely an apex predator in its environment. Extreme power could be generated from its tail, which was pushed up and down to act as a paddle, propelling the Eurypterid through the rivers and lakes it called home. Further acceleration could be produced from the rudder-like paddles jutting out backwards from the animal's body, and as such, Yekalopterus is thought to have been highly mobile, capable of lightning-fast turns to keep up with the fish and invertebrates it hunted. In the water, Yekalopterus could hover in place, scanning the environment for food, and was also capable of creeping along the bottom of lakes and estuaries to snap up food from the sediment. While it may have utilized ambush tactics when stalking its prey, it may also have been more than capable of chasing its victim down through the water at speed. Yekalopterus would use its pincers to grab prey, giving it an extra meter or so of reach when the arms were outstretched. Each claw would have been lined with jagged spines, impaling the catch when the Eurypterid first grasped hold of it, causing immense bleeding damage. From here, Yekalopterus was capable of bringing the food straight into its mouth underneath the head, or tearing it into bite-sized pieces. The pincers would also have been extremely useful in manipulating its food, orienting it in the right direction to deliver a killing blow. Yekalopterus was thought to have hunted primarily by sight, 
Its vision was complex and stereoscopic, meaning that the animal could perceive depth and accurately strike out at a sensible distance when hunting. It had compound eyes, a common sight in arthropods. Each eye would have been made up of cone-shaped structures that permitted a detailed range of vision for the Eurypterid, and this would have been its primary sense. Moreover, Yekalopterus's eyesight is thought to have improved with age, which may indicate that older Eurypterids moved to deeper, darker parts of lakes when they aged, perhaps hunting more difficult prey. Fossilized footprints and marks made by older Yekalopterus individuals might point towards the idea that these older individuals traveled to shallower regions to spawn, before traveling back to the depths. Younger Yekalopterus individuals are thought to have hatched from eggs laid close to the shoreline, where they would be safe from predators in the early stages of their lives. Here in the shallows, they would have pursued small fish and invertebrates, opting to take to the deeper, open reaches of lakes and estuaries as they aged. Here, they would have encountered larger animals that would make a better meal for an adult Yekalopterus. There is no evidence that Yekalopterus ever ventured out to sea, and it seems to have been strictly a freshwater species. Yekalopterus renanii fossils have been found in Germany's Klerf Formation, siltstones from the Devonian that paint a picture of the lakes and estuaries these Eurypterids lived in. Today, these rocks sit in the northern Eiffel Hills, near the town of Prum in the Rhineland of Germany. This was a world very much ruled by the Eurypterids, several genera of which lived alongside and were possibly hunted by Yekalopterus. Some of the additional Eurypterids discovered in the same rocks include Adelophthalmus, Renopterus, Prumopterus, and Eriopterus, amongst others. While some of these animals were efficient predators, none of them could match up with the sheer size of Yekalopterus and the latter very much would have been the dominant species in this environment. Creeping across the floor of these estuaries and lakes would have been Wilwarathia, another arthropod, yet not a Eurypterid. This animal was a Zivoshera, a group of animals represented only by the horseshoe crabs of today. Back in the Devonian, however, they were a very diverse group and Wilwarathia would have resembled a strange, aquatic, woodlouse-like animal, yet similar in form to the ancient trilobites. Elsewhere in these waters swam various species of early fish, all of which would have been suitable prey for Yekalopterus. These ranged greatly in size and form, occupying different ecological niches within the waters, as well as this, these rivers and lakes were full of tiny invertebrates, everything from shrimp-like ostracods to shellfish and microscopic plankton-like animals. On the shores were some of the world's first green areas. Plants had begun to diversify and spread following their evolution in the Silurian period. While trees and forests had not yet formed, these early meadows of greenery supported a wide range of arachnids and other invertebrates. Forests would evolve shortly after Yekalopterus became extinct, allowing for life on land to take another huge step. Perhaps what makes Yekalopterus so intriguing is how alien it is to us. The largest arthropod around today are the Japanese spider crabs, deep water crustaceans that occasionally reach monstrous sizes. They are, however, tucked in areas we humans cannot often reach, and as such, they are rarely seen. Eurypterids were the sharks and crocodiles of their day, visible at surface levels of the water and at times even on the coastlines. To see Yekalopterus racing through the water after a meal would truly be a sight to behold. <laughs>